I heard about this minister that got a brand new suit from his congregation <clears throat> for his birthday. And he was so touched in his heart that the congregation brought, bought him a new suit. So he went up in front of church the following Sunday with tears in his eyes. And he said to the congregation, today I'm going to preach to you in my birthday suit. <laughs> May this never be. But in Exodus chapter 28, we read about what the priest is supposed to wear. And we find out why the priest is supposed to wear that. And it raises a question in my mind. Do ministers have to wear clergy robes when they represent the church before God, when they minister the word of God to the congregation? And it's, I used to wear a robe every single Sunday. And that's just what I did. But after a while, it was more comfortable for me to wear a suit. At first, some people would say, well, how come you're not wearing your robe? And I say, well, I can preach more freely wearing my suit. But in Exodus chapter 28, we read about the priestly garments. And I want to show you a picture of it because, again, when we go through these highly detailed chapters in the Bible, sometimes a picture speaks a thousand words, right? And so here's Exodus 28 in picture form. This is what the priest wears. And then you see the breastplate, the breastplate that he's got with the 12 precious stones on his chest. Each one of those stones represents a tribe of Israel. And it's each one is a different kind of precious stone because every part of God's people is precious to God. And the priest has to wear this over his heart because he should have the people on his heart when he goes to God in prayer in the tabernacle. He shouldn't just do it because it's his job. He should actually love the people for whom he is serving. And that's why he's got the stones over his heart to remind them him of why. And it's called the breast piece of decision because on top of those 12 stones, there's also the Urim and the Thummim. And they would light up a certain bright color if God's answer was yes, and they wouldn't light up if the answer was no. That's how scholars think that worked. And this blue and this gown that he's wearing is called an ephod, like a long shirt. An ephod is also used to describe the staff that Aaron carried, but in many places in the Bible, the ephod refers to the shirt that the high priest wore. And there's the robe at the bottom and the tasseled fringe. And it's hard to see, but at the tasseled fringe, there are bells there at the bottom. And the reason why there's bells is so that people could hear the high priest working in the holy place. And if they didn't hear the bells anymore, that means he's dead. <laughs> that means he did something unacceptable and they'll have to use ropes to pull him out of there because they're not allowed in there. Only the priest is allowed in there. So now that you've seen the picture, let's look at the text because the text gives us a more detailed picture. Exodus 28, <clears throat> have Aaron, your brother, brought to you from among the Israelites, along with his sons, Nadab and Abihu, and they're going to die when we get to Leviticus 10. Spoiler alert. Eliezer and Ithamar, so they may serve me as priests. The primary reason why a person would become a priest or a minister is to serve God, serve me. I mean, yeah, you do it because you love to teach and you love people and you love seeing people come to Christ. But first and foremost, it's serving the Lord. Verse 2, make sacred garments for your brother Aaron to give him dignity and honor. So the ornate priestly outfit was a reminder of the precious heavenly calling that God put on his life. And that's why some ministers choose to wear clergy robes and gowns today because it's a precious calling. And so the gown is a reminder of the prestige of the calling. Now, I don't think there's anything in the New Testament that requires a minister to do that. When you look at the apostles, they weren't wearing anything ornate when they were out sharing the gospel. And I don't see any indication amongst the qualifications of being an elder in 1 Timothy 3 that would lead me to believe that you have to wear an ornate robe or gown. But still, this speaks to me. 
it speaks to me because it reminds me that in the eyes of God, it is a precious thing to be called into his service. And so the clothing is a sign and symbol of the office that God has called the priest to. Verse 3, tell all the skilled men to whom I've given wisdom that they are to make garments for Aaron or his, for his consecration so he may serve me as a priest. And I remember when I got ordained, I was I had to buy the robe myself. You know, what can I say? But I was given a stole to wear and I was allowed to have that as an ordination gift. Verse 4, these are the garments they are to make. A breast piece, we saw that with the precious stones. An ephod, that's the blue shirt. A robe, down below the shirt. A woven tunic, a turban, and a sash. And they, And this is the ordination uniform. And it tells you it's made out of gold and blue and purple and scarlet. You know, a lot of ministers' robes are gray or black or drab looking, but these were beautiful, these ornate robes. Then the ephod, that's in verses 6 through 14, make the ephod of gold and a blue, purple, and scarlet yarn. And you can see that right there. And then it has a skillfully woven waistband in the middle. Verse 9, take two onyx stones and engrave on them the names of the sons of Israel in the order of their birth so they can be close to the heart. Verse 15 through 28, the breast piece. And that's where you got the Urim, Urim and the Thummim. And then below that, you've got the stones representing the 12 tribes of Israel. And then got the robe the rope attached at the back so you can yank him out of there if he dies <laughs> verse 29 whenever Aaron enters the holy place he will bear the names of the sons of Israel over his heart on the breastplate breast piece of decision as a continuing memorial before the Lord you know I don't wear anything like this when I do church but you guys got to know I have you in my heart I have you over my heart when I say the pastoral prayer and then other priestly garments, beginning in verse 31, make the robe of the ephod entirely of blue cloth. You can see that, right? With an opening for the head in its center. You can see that. There shall be a woven edge like a collar around this opening so it will not tear. And then it mentions make pomegranates of blue and purple and scarlet yarn around the hem of the robe. And pomegranate is a fruit. And it's a reminder that those in ministry are to be fruitful. Verse 35, Aaron must wear this as he ministers. The sound of the bells on the fringe of the garment will be heard when he enters the holy place before the Lord and when he comes out so that he will not die. Okay. <laughs> Verse 36, make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it as a seal, holy to the Lord, and it'll be on Aaron's forehead. So this is, and then it mentions in verse 42, they have to wear linen on undergarments. They are not to take a chance that they could be naked or shamefully exposed. This is to be a lasting ordinance for Aaron and his descendants. Now, I wanted to share with you the difference between the priestly garment and what the Lord Jesus Christ wore when he ministered on the earth. I thought this was a very interesting comment in David Guzik's commentary. Jesus wore no beautiful blue ephod, only a purple robe for mocking. Jesus had no precious gems on his shoulders, only a cross that we deserved. Number three, Jesus had no breastplate with Israel on his heart, yet he died of a broken heart for all of Israel. Remember, he was weeping over Jerusalem in Luke 19, 41 to 45. Number four, as the high priest, Jesus had a seamless robe that was not torn, but it was stripped away at the cross. Number five, Jesus heard no delicate sound of bells proving that the high priest was alive, only the pounding of nails into his hands and feet. Number six, Jesus wore no fine linen turban, rather a painful crown of thorns. Number seven, Jesus had no head plate reading holiness to the Lord, but a life and death that showed nothing but holiness to the Lord.
And number eight, Jesus had no linen trousers to hide his nakedness. Rather, he bore our sins on the cross in a naked shame. You know, if anybody deserves dignity and honor, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. He should have been dressed up that way. He should have been the embodiment of holiness to the Lord in his garb. But he gave all that aside. He laid all his glory aside and came down here and died on the cross for our sins because he loved us. He didn't just have us written over our heart. He had us in his heart and paid the price for you and I. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 says, such a high priest meets our need, one who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him, because he always lives to intercede for them. So this picture, this portrait of the high priest in Exodus 28 is a reminder of the glorious Lord Jesus Christ, who didn't need all the fancy robes to demonstrate his glory because it was in his character, it was in his person, it was in his nature to be that way for our behalf. So as we look at this, I want you to fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. No one loves you more than Jesus. I love you, but Jesus loves you even more. Jesus loves you, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. You guys have a wonderful day. We'll be back tomorrow for Exodus chapter 29.